And that's why I don't be wanting to use this. Because it ain't working. <laughs> they still telling God no. So what the hell am you going to oil for? That's my point. Shalom. Welcome back to another predestined, predestined kingdom ministry or ministry. International video. So I just keep having an experience of people trying to do spiritual hijacks all day. Whenever I'm praying, if not the false prophetess herself going through my parent or somebody around me, she's physically in the air flying over the house. And so God said, go on live and tell her or them, that's what I'm judging that very act of disobedience, of not respecting people's boundaries of a no to you, okay? So when you get to say, oh no, the wrath, no, it's for you. The judgment is for you in this season. God's wrath is for you in this season for lying, for stealing, and for killing. Not only did you do it this year, but you did it in the past. And then you keep lying on God that he's allowing you to move the way that you're moving in his authority. And he says, Moses too, that's not the case. Okay. So your actions of theft is being judged. You keep trying to steal or you keep doing group based malice, which means you're bullying somebody. And then you keep lying about it. But God just saw you and he said to come on live and tell all of y'all false prophets, judgment is here. He's ready to clean out the church and he's cleaning out people houses or he's moving people out of that environment. It doesn't matter how hard you stop, you will have a dead body like you keep saying, not over my dead body. Well, God's going to make sure you're rested so people can get what they have from him. He keeps saying he's ready and willing to give now in this season. Not for you to keep sp raising spiritual and physical warfare against somebody for them to change their minds. An extortion to obedience. An extortion to obedience. Deuteronomy 29 verse 9. Keep therefore the word or words of this covenant and do them. That ye may prosper in all that ye do. The root meaning of the Hebrew word translated obey is to hear. I didn't know that. It's to hear God's voice and do what he says. To obey, Hebrews meaning is to hear. Can you hear God talking to you and telling you to stop doing what you're doing? That's the real definition of obey is to hear God. And so when you tell him no after you hear him, you don't have obedience after that. In the root of the word, you couldn't hear what he said and just obey. And just stop flying over Kenithia house. Samuel. It's still the same group based malice people. He's saying to say Sarah's name. To obey means to hear and to do. And when we obey God blesses our lives. For doing what he told us to do. It didn't say if we fell short and if we still sinned over here. He wouldn't bless us. But the fact that we're obeying, we're hearing his voice through the word or just in prayer, however he decides to commune with us. The fact that we're obeying what we hear, that's what's making him want to bless us. And so, no, you don't make sense telling somebody what a scripture says. You're not supposed to be blessed because you fall short here. The whole point of this is, can you hear God's voice and obey him? To obey means to hear. I can't say it enough. Obedience keeps us from tangling with many of the dangers we come in contact with when we disobey. 
through obeying God, we make ourselves available to receive his blessings. God rewards obedience. God's obedience flows into our life of every believer as our wills, revelation, as our wills are in harmony with his. Okay, the lesson text outlines the blessings God promised the church of Israel if they listen to the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all that he commands. We are urged today to obey the word of God. We believe that if we obey the word of God, God will reward our obedience and we will have access to the same blessings God promised the Israelites. Obey the word and obey the voice of God. Obeying the word is a sacrifice. Obeying the voice of God is obedience. You see, obeying the word of God is a sacrifice. You're going to try your hardest not to sin. We're born into flesh. You're going to fall short somewhere. You might as well accept it and stop trying to penalize everybody around you for what God already said is going to happen. Obey the word that teaches us the nature of God. And then God has grace. He's not so hard on us. He know we're going to fall short in obeying these commandments in this Bible. I'm not going to lie and say, oh, yes, Kenithia perfect. She going to do every single thing in here. It's a lie. You're lying. If you say you do as a leader, you don't. You just don't want people to know where you fall short at, but you fall short. And so God comes and he speaks and he says, you know what? It's okay. Even though they fell short in this part of the word to obey, I'm still going to bless them. That's what my grace is for. God says he gives the grace. He judges. He says when to release and when to go, when to come. He's not knocking, don't obey the word, but obey his voice first. Once you read the word, it builds the connection so you can hear God even clearer. And that's because you're obeying the word, the scripture word. Now, when he speaks, you don't say, oh, no, God, that's not what you said in your word. Everything is not in the Bible. Did you forget that scripture? So how can you knock when he speaks to you? Obey the voice of God. If he told you to let something go, let it go. If he says, let Kenithia go and stop being an unwanted spirit attachment, it doesn't matter your title in the church. Let me go. That's what God has been saying for over half of y'all um, stalking spiritually and physically, which is just following me all day and night, doing spiritual and psychic attacks to stop whatever manifestation you don't want me to have. That's a sin because you're going to the word and saying, oh, God, they don't deserve it. And God is telling you that he's God. If he wants to give somebody something or someone, he can do that. He created this whole cycle of, of, of himself in the kingdom. The heavenly father. Obey the voice of God. Don't tell him what the scripture. He know what the word says. He keeps saying that. Can you hear, which means can you obey in Hebrew, the voice of God? And while you're obeying the voice of God, obey the word of God as well. But don't knock people and doubt people and count them out when that's God's job. That's what's being said here. It's a two part. Yes, people are going to fall short. Yes, people aren't going to always obey, but God has grace. And if he releases it, that's what you obey. The voice of God that released the grace over somebody to receive in that season. Obey the voice of God that told you to leave me alone. An extortion to obedience. Obey to hear the voice of God to hear and do what God says in the scripture. And when he speaks, God says his men shall have vision 
visions. There shall be prophets. Y'all know the scripture. Y'all Christian leaders. Obey the voice of God. It's God's choice. That's the next daily devotional. It's God's choice to release something to somebody. A lot of y'all Christian leaders keep telling God no because some of us or many of us fall short according to scripture. And God keeps saying it's his choice. Whether he wants to release grace for that person to move forward in the new or not. Blessed are they that do his commandments and I'm sorry. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the city gates, through the gates in the city. It's God's choice. Numbers 27 verse 18 through 19. And the Lord said unto Moses, take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit and lay thine hand upon him. And he set him before Eliezer, the priest and before all the congregation and gave him a charge in their sight is God's choice who he's putting in charge is God's choice what he wants to allow someone to do when we fall short from him. We all fall short. So I don't know why y'all acting like that in, in y'all authorities. Y'all fall short every day. We all sin. You could do all that prayer 10 to 12 hours a day. I bet you it was your attitude and how you treated somebody that caused you to sin. That God said you fell short that day. Moses wanted to make sure a new leader was appointed before he died. As a result, he asked God to appoint a leader over the congregation so the people would not be without a shepherd. God appointed Joshua as his successor. Joshua was God's choice because he had proven himself by his courage in fighting. Amalek, his humility, I'm sorry, yeah, his humility in ministering to Moses. And his faith with sense and sincerity and witnessing against the report of the evil spies. So Joshua was a man in whom was the spirit. Joshua was a man in whom was the spirit and so it's very important that you see the holy spirit was in this man he was led by god he was appointed by god god said i wanted her even though she's a woman even though it's this i want this one to speak for me that's what god is saying it's his choice After the death of Moses, God spoke to Joshua and promised to be with him. He read, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, As I have been with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. We further read that God commanded Joshua, Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever. And so, I'm sorry. For the Lord God, thou God, is with thee, wherever is thou go, or thou goest. And so Joshua's courage was based upon God's presence with him. Are you fighting God and you think it's okay and God keeps saying stop every day, but you keep bringing up Jacob wrestling God and God keeps saying, I said stop. When God chooses leaders, he also empowers them to lead. God was with Joshua both spiritually and physically. His leadership was carried out only through the encouragement and command of God. 
when Joshua mobilized and directed the Israelites in entering and possessing the land, he did so under the guidance of God. And so anytime you see somebody just fighting God all day and night, stop going to their church. They, you don't know what they stopped God from giving you. What they felt like you wasn't worthy for, but God said it was good for you. Stop helping them fight against other people. They're wrong. God keeps saying my kingdom departed from them. This lady's still in the sky doing thunderstorms. Amongst bug attacks, ants all the time because this lady want Anthony. Like all kind of foolishness. She just keep going. Then people getting mad at me because they going on the wrong people's side. And now they got to get that punishment. Or those consequences for messing with the wrong people. Especially when somebody is asking you to respect them. Respect their opinions. Respect their no's. Respect why they said no. And you just keep fighting them all day and night. You're the devil. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. You can't tell anybody anything else. God, you sitting up here, God directly speaking to you. Let it go. Stop telling her she can't have it until she stops smoking. I'm giving Kenithia grace to move forward. I'm give, I'm choosing her. She's been obedient. I want her to have her stuff now. And you just keep fighting. You're the devil. That's what I saw last night. You're a murderer. You're a liar. And you're the devil. And you sit up there and say, well, I'm prophetess such and such. I'm overseer such. No, you're the damn devil. If God can speak and you can hear God when you want to hear God, but you don't want to give people their stuff. And it's a hey, hey, shataba. You're the devil. His leadership, God was with Joshua both spiritually and physically. His leadership was carried out only through the encouragement and the command of God. When Joshua mobilized and directed the Israelites in entering and possessing the land, he did so under the guidance of God. Did it say he had this, this prophet? Did it? No. And what does God keep bringing up about them um, elder prophets over us young prophets? The young prophet listened to the elder prophet and died. That's the parable we keep getting in this ministry. And so when y'all say we disobedient, God say, no, 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 no. They're very much obedient over there. I'm leading predestined kingdom ministries. Joshua's leadership was not the result of his natural gifts and skills. No, because we always fall short when it comes to that, but rather in God's leading and speaking through Kenithia. Speaking and leading through King Joshua. God's presence and empowerment enables great spiritual leadership. Can I tell you, I met some great people along the way that's still helping me now behind the scenes. Because God is using his people. Can I tell you, half of these people just saw me and God spoke to them. They knew I needed help and they helped out the kindness of their heart. Didn't care. It was half of their friends that were against me. That's God. I got chills, Lord. The same can be true for all of us today. When God chooses, he equips, empowers, and guides his chosen leaders. Exodus 3, 11, And Moses said unto God, Who am I, that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? He didn't understand the presence of God is the most powerful thing. 
That's what I keep saying. I may not have the millions. I may not have this, but I'm obedient to say a prayer. And God says, I love her. I'm going to answer that prayer. And then you healed or you get your financial breakthrough. The presence of God can't be brought with money or, you know, in every Bible scripture, but the presence of God comes with you hearing him and having the heart to just want to love him and obey him. Even if you don't like he helping out your enemies from time to time or allowing them to look like they win. But it's God's choice. He been saying that all week in these messages It's my choice. I'm the judge. You don't give her the Bible scripture and tell her to stop because that's what the Bible says. But I'm alive. I'm not a deity. I'm not an idol. I'm present. Are you hearing? Are you obeying? To obey means to hear in Hebrew. We just learned that this morning. Which is something God has been saying through different scriptures, but you're not perceiving it because you're trying to find a scripture to go against God. He is the word. That's why you've been hearing him speak this scripture as a spirit attachment. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. If he says it's okay, he don't, he know, he sees everything. He knows when we're doing good. He knows when we sin, he knows everything. He sees it and he forgives half of the time. You don't want somebody being blessed because you didn't forgive them for not waking up with you at four in the morning every single morning to pray with you. You didn't forgive them for leaving church service early because they didn't have a vehicle and their family was telling them to come home in their car. Forgiveness. God knows what your, your true intentions are and how you really feel. And so when you're going against somebody with the presence of God and he keeps saying, I departed my kingdom from you. That's dangerous. It's dangerous because you're fighting God. <laughs> the same God you call on to send judgment to everybody else that wrongs you. Are you obeying and hearing God? Are you letting him make his choice? Or are you fighting him in disobedience and playing crazy saying you didn't do nothing to him? When he's sending judgments, vengeance and wrath. It's time for all of us to wake up and watch how we're treating people every single day. Did, did it say Joshua had a doctorate's degree? King Joshua? No. Did it say he finished all the Sabbath school with the, with the, with the royal high priests and prophets? No. It said that God chose him and that his presence was just on him and that Joshua, King Joshua was Actually, it don't say, but he was one of the youngest to come out and the most successful. He cleaned out the father's house. Every deity that was there, every false idol, they even had, um, they had raw the sun god, but no, they had, um, ball. Ball was really big at that time. And he cleaned out the father's house. So you don't tell God that people who do all of that for him shouldn't be blessed because they fall short over here. The fact that they was obedient and successful with God, even while, even we're going to sin. He keeps saying that we're going to sin guys, whether it, whether it be in spoken trees, ain't really no sin. The Bible, every herb of the thing shall be smoked. Like God keep justifying certain stuff and then y'all keep telling God how y'all don't want him to have that choice. It's his choice. Don't be disobedient going against what God is saying and, and you just brainwash yourself out because God is still going to punish you for it.